Today's our marriage and relationship service. And God has been so precious and gracious to us. It was an awesome time in the first service. So I'm going to continue from where I stopped in first service in this second service. We gave a definition of what loneliness is all about. Like as we hear that David, the psalm is crying out here. Lord, I'm lonely and distressed. You can be anointed and still be lonely. I'm lonely and distressed. You can be a king and still be lonely. I'm lonely and distressed. You can be married and still be lonely. He said, pull me out of this mess. Pull me out of it. I pray for somebody hearing my voice here today. That God, the God of all flesh, and the Father of all nations, shall deliver somebody here today. In Jesus' name. All right, let's get into the word quickly. We have four definitions on loneliness. We saw two in the first service, and we're going to be looking at the second two in the second service. In the first service, we say loneliness is an emotional state of sadness born out of the feelings of rejection, abandonment, or being forgotten. Number two, we say loneliness is the sad feelings or experiences of relative or total disconnection from a physical, social, or emotional relationship. So we'll push it further in this second service by getting the third definition. And that is the experience of deficits in the quality and quantity of attention you used to get in from places or people you desired more from. We say loneliness is the experience of deficits in the quality or quantity of attention you used to get in from places or people you desired more from. When you are sincerely connected to people, and you are privileged to enjoy love and attention from them, or you are sincerely connected to a place or places where you are privileged to have love in their fullness or attention from in their fullness. And suddenly, you begin to notice a withdrawal, a deficit in the quality of love and attention you used to get or a deficit in the quantity of love or the attention you used to get it begins to create loneliness in the life of a person the truth of the matter is when you notice a disconnection from the people you used to be well connected to and you do everything you can to want to reconnect as much and as strong as it used to be. And you don't get it. You begin to feel lonely. You just notice that something is missing somewhere. You notice that something is wrong somewhere. That feeling that you have about the drop or the deficit in love expression towards you. Or in attention given towards you from certain quarters or certain places, or certain people you used to get from that you don't get anymore, begins to create loneliness. Have you ever been to a state, or been in a state, or been around people, where you got treated somehow, and then you're taken aback to begin to start wondering, did I do anything wrong? Have I done something wrong? Are you understanding me? Somebody that picks your call before you dial, suddenly doesn't pick your call again after you have dialed several times. You send message, no response. You made calls, they didn't pick. You will begin to wonder, is something wrong somewhere? When things like this begin to happen, it's a clear sign that there is a deficit in both the quality and quantity of attention or love that you used to get. Number four, what is loneliness? Loneliness is the feeling of unwanted isolation or lack of connection. Whether you are alone or in the midst of people. The feeling of unwanted isolation 
or lack of connection. Whether you are alone or surrounded by people. Now, loneliness is not just being isolated. You can be in the home. It's possible to be with your husband or with your wife and still be lonely. Is somebody getting me? There are many married couples that are still lonely. The rings are in their hands, but they are lonely. The wedding certificate is still hanging there, but they are lonely. Their wedding pictures are hanging up right there, but they are still lonely. There are people in courtship today that are lonely. They've agreed that they're going to marry each other, but yet they feel emptiness in their connection. There is no bond. There is no connection. There is nothing that brings them together. Though officially and traditionally, they've made up their minds that they're going to marry each other. But yet you feel that loneliness. Why? Because there is a disconnection or a deliberate isolation in their mind, in their soul, and in their spirit. Praise the Lord. So two people can be together and yet still be lonely. Amen? Now, there's a difference between loneliness and isolation. Loneliness is created by forces that are beyond you. Isolation is a product of your choice. A product of your choice. Two couples told themselves that for them not to have open embarrassment, the best thing they will do is to stay under the same roof. But they're not married. Nobody will know that they are not married. But the people, I mean, their wedding picture is there. The wedding ring is still there. But as long as they are consigned, they are not married. So the woman isolates herself. The man isolates himself under the same roof. But when there are functions that maybe couples need to come together, they will come together as husband and wife. But they themselves, they understand that the only place where they are closest is in public. But in their private... In their, in their private life, in their closet, there are two wings apart. Two ends apart. Why? They deliberately chose to be isolated. The woman wants to be on her own. The man wants to be on his own. So there are people that have isolated themselves while in marriage or isolated themselves from their own family members or isolated themselves from friends so loneliness is the feeling of unwanted isolation created by self amen or lack of connection whether you are alone or in the midst of people praise the lord praise the lord we talked about the 10 signs that you see when you are lonely 10 signs that you are lonely number one we say you feel empty Number two, you feel defeated. Number three, you feel unwanted. Number four, you feel worthless. Number five, you feel unaccepted or unacceptable. You feel unacceptable or unaccepted. We'll pick it now from number six. The sixth sign that you are lonely is that you feel inadequate. You feel inadequate. You just feel that you can't measure up. There is no need trying to connect or trying to relate. You just feel that you cannot measure up. There are people who give up on the effort to making relationship to work. Tell them try, they say there is no need trying again. I give up. I just give up. They feel inadequate because to them, there is nothing in them that completes them enough that would help them to make a relationship work. So they feel inadequate. As long as they're consigned, they don't have anything it takes to make a marriage work or whatever it takes to make a relationship work. Some years ago, in our old church then, a young, tall, beautiful lady walked into the church her first time. We finished service, shared grace, and she said, Pastor, can I talk with you? I said, yes, please. We sat down. And she said she has a big problem. What is the problem? That any man that comes to ask her hand in marriage, she turns them down. I said, why? She said, because she just feels that 
she cannot make a marriage work. So I look at her. Are you educated? She said she was a graduate. You have a job in a business? She's well employed. So what is the problem? She said she cannot tell. But she just feels within herself that she doesn't have what it takes to make marriage work. Now let's delve into the physical um, factors that could make a marriage work on the part of a lady. Number one, she's God-fearing. Number two, she's educated. Number three, she's beautiful. Number four, she has got good manners. Number five, add it yourself. Number six, add it yourself. At least the basic ones that you could see, I mean, on a lady that says she possesses everything it takes for her to be a good wife. Yet, she says she feels inadequate of getting married. Because as long as she's concerned, what it will take to make a relationship work or make a marriage work is lacking in her life. There are many people that are in this state, single men, who find it difficult to approach ladies because they feel that they are inadequate. They don't have everything. They don't have all it takes. Now let's look at the part of a man. What does it take for a man to be willing or to become able to settle down? Number one, he's God-fearing. Number two, he has a job or a business. Number three, he lives under a roof. He's not squatting, even if it is one room. Self-contained or public contained, any of them at all. Are you understanding me? Number four, he can give his wife three square meals. What again? He has good character. Amen? And yet the man looks at himself and says, no, he doesn't feel adequate to marry. The moment you begin to feel this inadequacy on your inside, just understand that loneliness is ravaging your life. And today, I see God delivering somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Number seven. Sign that you are suffering from loneliness. Eating disorder. Eating disorder. Glutonin or loss of appetite. Medically and scientifically, this is proven. Naturally and by general experience, this is true. Anytime you notice a sudden eating disorder in your life, just understand that you're suffering from loneliness. Either you are overeating just to while away time, just overeating. There are people like that. You see yourself, under three months, you have, you have, you have added so much weight. Or under three months, you have lost so much weight. Either eating this other by overgluttoning or, to, uh, gluttoning, or eating this other by lack of appetite. But you notice in your physical body, there is a change in your physiology. A change in your physical appearance. And the funniest thing about this is that you will not be able to lay hands on exactly what is wrong. You can't trace it. You can't figure it out. Praise the Lord. The psalmist found himself in this kind of state. Why did he know exactly what was wrong with him? In Psalms 42 verse 5. He started speaking to himself. Started addressing himself. He said, my soul, why are you cast down? What's your problem? It's because the guy was suffering loneliness. He was going through loneliness. A state where his own parents rejected him. His own brothers abandoned him. His own friends betrayed him. Those he gave food to eat sold him out. He turned around, nobody to turn to. Suddenly became depressed. Became lonely. I pray for somebody hearing my voice. That today, God will bring healing to your hearts. I didn't hear your amen. I said God will bring healing to your heart. In the name of Jesus. Number eight. Am I right? Sleep disorder. Either you're oversleeping or you're undersleeping. Oversleeping or undersleeping. You just find yourself sleeping. Anywhere you are, you are sleeping. If you are greeting people, you are sleeping. Praise the Lord. In the toilet, you are sleeping. 
or you take multiple volume five and yet sleep disappears from your eyes. You're on your bed. Take note of that sound. Take care of it. You are right on your bed, but just counting ceiling. Twelve midnight still awake. Are you reading? No. Praying? No. Thinking? No. Not even thinking. You're just lost. Lost in your own world. Before you realize it, it is 2 a.m. And yet you can't figure anything out. Rolling on the bed. From the bed to the rug. From the rug to the sofa. From there to the pallor. You turn on television. You don't know what you're watching. Stay there for a while. You get angry. Go to the kitchen. Try to get something to eat. Appetite is gone. You walk back to the living room again. From there, go back to your bedroom. Sometimes you just go and sit in the toilet. Just while in away time. Before you open your eyes, it's daybreak. Loss of sleep. When you see this ravage in your life, it's a clear sign that loneliness has overtaken that person's life. May God send us help. I didn't hear your amen. I said, may God send us help. In the name of Jesus Christ. The number nine sign that you are lonely is inaction or immobile. Inaction or immobile. You lose the energy, the enthusiasm to want to get things done. There is a desire to move within your heart, but you feel stuck at a place. Redundant. Weakened. Entire system, weakened. You know you're supposed to be somewhere by 2 p.m. But you're just sitting, moping and looking in a gallimatious way. Don't look for that word in Oxford Dictionary because you won't find it. But you're just lost in thoughts. Demobilized. Rendered inactive. If you must move at all because of the necessity and the sensitivity of where you are supposed to go or the people you are supposed to meet, you drag yourself. No more zest for life. No more interest for existence. You just manage to pull through each day of your life. It's a clear sign that you're suffering from loneliness. God will bring solution today. And God will bring deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. A young lady was discovered to be home. No work. She had a good job. She just woke up one day and didn't feel like going to work. The one came past. Neighbors didn't see her out. Office colleagues didn't see her in the office. They too, they got consigned. And they gave her a call. Are you okay? She said, yeah, she's okay. We didn't see you at work. She said, no problem. Neighbors knocked. Are you okay? She said, yeah, she's okay. Why have you not been out? She said, she's okay. They won. The two, the three, and then they busted into her house. What's the problem? And she said she's tired of life. She feels like taking her life away. No interest for work. No interest to interact. No interest to socialize. No interest to doing anything. There are people whose businesses have been lost because they got to a point in life where money couldn't satisfy them anymore. They were lost in loneliness. And they refuse to act. They refuse to do things. Their business is gone. There are people that lost their job for the loss of interest to want to leave or the lack of interest to want to get some things done or go back to work. Why? Loneliness ravaged them so much that they couldn't work. And because of their lack and interest to want to work or get engaged in their daily activities, they lost what they were doing. I pray for somebody hearing my voice, in case you're suffering from this, that God will bring you solution in the name of Jesus Christ. The tenth sign that you're suffering from loneliness is having the cravings to want to meet people, yet not ready to have a friend. You have the cravings to want to meet people, yet you are not ready to keep a friend. 
I've seen people like that who want to meet everybody. Hello, how are you doing? My name is so-so-and-so. -so. As soon as they finish greeting and talking, they walk away from there. They go to another person. They greet, they walk away from there. They go to another person. They greet, they walk away from there. They go to another person. And then some of them, when you see them, they want to snap with everybody. They want to snap with everybody. The excitement is in them seeing themselves in picture with people. Yet, they have no relationship with anybody. May they not show up in birthday parties or wedding parties. They will come to snap. Selfie. They don't know this person from anywhere. They just come to. They go to another place. Selfie. They don't know anybody from anywhere. They snap. They go to another place. Selfie. Then when they are leaving that environment, they begin to flip through the pictures and be smiling. The reason is because nobody gave them attention. But these ones are bold enough to come out of their hiding places and step into the public world and then be able to at least make themselves happy for a while. When they are done snapping with people, they find fulfillment and then go back again to their lonely cages. In public, they look excited. But in the private, Something is dying. Something is drying up. So anytime they have the occasion or the invitation to be in public space, wow, they make the best of it. It's not everybody that you see snapping it. Everybody that is a lively person. No. Some use that as medicine to heal their loneliness. I'm not saying that when you start snapping with people today, it's because you're suffering from loneliness. That's not what I'm saying. I'm this kind of person, I can bump into people snapping. I can do that. My wife has witnessed it several times. People will just be snapping out, just running. Whether I know them or not, I'm just an interesting person. You may not like my face, but that is me. You may not like my name. That is your business. But I make myself happy. Whether you like it or not. Amen. Are you aware that somebody got angry at me one day that I, 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 I like looking good always? It became his problem because I'm not wearing rag. <laughs> there are some of you here who cannot dress because you are scared of people. Yes, there are some of you here. You can't wear good clothes. If I wear this good cloth now, okay. No, let me just remove it. You remove it. You drop it. There are some people that will not dress well because they don't want people to ask them for money. <laughs> what a cage. What a slavery. What an enslavement. Amen? Can I say something here? I beg you. I was teaching, okay, I, I, I will explain that. Uh, I was talking about the solutions to loneliness. One of the key solutions to loneliness is your ability to be contented with yourself by your own self. Are you understanding me? Be contented with yourself by yourself. We'll get to that. Particularly in a country like Nigeria, where the economy is biting, foreign price increased. Bag of fries, almost 100,000. Moodle of fries has left 1,000 naira. Am I right? What again? Huh? Everything. 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 Now your landlord is frowning at you. He wants to create a problem that will make you leave the house so that he can increase the rent. Different is everything biting everywhere. You know the best thing to do? Just wake up. Make yourself rejoice. Make yourself happy. Put some gospel music and begin to dance. Celebrate and celebrate and celebrate and celebrate. If you have money to enter a taxi, enter a taxi. When you get in, dash the driver, they, they change. If you enter Okada, coming down from Okada, don't ask for change. In short, collect it, look at it, and dash the Okada man. Go to the smart, go to the supermarket, buy something. And dash the person on the counter. 
That's the person they change. Are you understanding me? There is a way you will behave that poverty will fear you. And lack will begin to honor you. There is a way you behave. This is not the time to cry. It's the time to deliberately put up a face and tell yourself, no matter how scarce animals are in the forest, the lion will never go hungry. And it will never eat grass. I've been young. And now I'm getting old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging for bread. You will not beg for bread. May your amen make it happen for you. I say you will not beg for bread. In this city and in this nation. You will not beg for bread. May your amen make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Can we take it further? Five reasons why some people get into loneliness. Five reasons. Is it five I mentioned the first service or six? Five, right? Number one is relationship failure. Number two is self-unforgiveness from past mistakes. Number three, negative self-esteem. Number four is the fear of being rejected again. Number five, the fear of the unknown. We'll take it further now. Six dangers of loneliness. Six dangers of loneliness. In the first service, we looked at depression. When you get lonely, depression sets in. Leads to mental retardation. Two is suicidal attempts. Either they attempt to commit suicide or end up being a victim of suicide. Three is sickness. All manner of sicknesses. The third danger of loneliness is that it brings in sickness. When your mind is not functioning and your body is not functioning and your entire body organs, I mean, are not as functional as they should be. Because you made up your mind to become depressed and you feel lonely and you become inactive or immobile. The next thing you see is that your systems begin to fail. We call them system breakdown. And by this, sicknesses begin to come in. The heart begins to have challenge. The liver begins to have challenge. Before you open your eyes, certain part of your body that has not been engaged begin to suffer from rust or rustiness and the next thing you see is called stroke a lot of vital items in your body begin to lose the ability to walk diabetes set in and somebody will say it's set and fighting them no it's loneliness the danger of loneliness is that it brings in sickness some of the sicknesses some people are suffering today is as a product of the presence and the wickedness of loneliness. A lot of people think that when they choose to become lonely, they get better. They don't. Don't stop going out because people offended you. Don't stop making friends because other friends offended you. Don't stop it. Live your life well and live it to the fullest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number what now? Number four will be the loss of interest to further relate with people. The fourth danger of loneliness is that it disconnects you from people unconsciously. You wouldn't want to go ahead to relate with anybody. Because you hear people giving examples. No, I, 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 I tried relating with this person. It didn't work. There are ladies today that have vowed that they will not get married. Why? Because as long as they're consigned, all men are scums. All men. All men. It's not all. Ask my wife. Not all. Now you hear the guy say, ladies are never to be trusted. Never. All ladies are deceivers and pretenders and um, any name you want to give. Loneliness makes people not to want to make their attempt to relate more in the future. 
And let me say something here. The time that you will spend thinking about somebody that broke your heart or that disappointed you or cheated on you or jilted you, the time you will use to spend thinking about it, creating depression, creating pain in your heart, creating um, stagnation or mental retardation or irritability in your mind and in your body or anything about all that sets you back and pulls you back. That time you'll be using thinking of the whole of these things. I beg, use it to clear your future. There is no guarantee that the first lady you propose to must be the one that should be your wife. There is no guarantee. It is not a law, neither is it scriptural, that the guy who proposes to you first must be your husband. It is not. I'm not talking about friendship. I'm talking about proposal. Even to the point of engagement. It's possible that you're engaged and yet you're not the right people for yourselves. And it packs up. Don't say, I almost got married. I almost got married. And it didn't work again. What happened? The guy dumped me. Why not thank God? It's better to be dumped in the process of getting married than being dumped after being married. Because anybody that has the tendency or the mind to dump in you, he will dump you. If he does not dump you before engagement, he will dump you after engagement. If he does not dump you after engagement, he will dump you before marriage. If he doesn't dump you before marriage, he will dump you after marriage. If he does not dump you after marriage, he will dump you maybe when you, are getting, when you get pregnant or after your first child. If he doesn't do that, he will dump you after the children have grown up. If the dumping didn't happen 30 years ago, it will happen 30 years from now. It will still happen. Is somebody hearing me? This is a hard truth. But they exist. You wonder why some people after 17 children are still divorcing. It didn't start that day. You wonder why some people after 28 years of marriage they are still divorcing each other. It didn't just happen. There was a sense of it before the wedding took place. But they endured. They tried to manage it. Or they pretended. It shall not be your portion. I say it shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. So make up your mind that no matter how bad it is, you will not let anything rob you of the joy of a future relationship. If you were married before the marriage didn't work, and the both of you went your separate ways, amicably, you choose to say, okay, this marriage cannot work again. You prayed, you, 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 you went for counseling, you did everything you could, and yet it is not remediable. It's not workable. And you amicably went each other's way. Instead of monitoring the man to see who he will marry, you prepare yourself for who will marry you. Instead of monitoring the lady, to see who we marry her. Make up your mind to go ahead with your life. Is somebody hearing me? Are we together? I mean, these are deep truths. These are deep truths. When a generation where marriages pack up easily, you know why? Because people get into each other easily. They don't know themselves, but they marry themselves. When they finish marrying themselves, they started knowing themselves. Unfortunately, what they are beginning to know right now it's not what they bargain for. And because they cannot continue like that, they say they're going separate ways. Under normal circumstances, it's not supposed to be like that. When the generation where a man sees a lady, and the lady sees the man, and they know that they're not compatible, and the people around them know that they're not compatible, and you tell them that come the two of you that I'm seeing, you people are not compatible, oh, they say, yes, we are aware, but we will still marry. Let's try and see if it will work. Are you understanding me? And they go ahead to marry. And the marriage doesn't work. And without struggle, they find each other's way. What a pain. What a shame. Please, do whatever you can, you can to make it work. Do whatever you can to find the right person. Do whatever you can to make sure that he is the right person. Or she is the right person. Before you venture into wanting to say, I do, I do. Number what now? 
Number five, danger of loneliness is that it creates the lack of trust. Just like what I said, you hear somebody say, all men are cheats. All ladies are deceivers. Why? Because of the experience they've had. Somebody tortured them. Then they made up their mind not to trust another person. It brings in the lack of trust. Praise the Lord. Finally on this point, number six. Danger of loneliness. It leaves you with delays. God could have given you more speed. But you deliberately tied yourself down by virtue of whatever happened to you or whatever you went through. You deliberately tied yourself down. Tied yourself down. People came asking the lady to stand in marriage. She said, no. She has suffered enough. Let her wait for a while. So she was waiting. The next man came asking her hand in marriage. She said, please, she needed time. The second guy came asking her hand in marriage. She said, she needed time. Men kept coming. She needed time. Finally, when the time came, there was no man to ask her hand in marriage again. No man. Loneliness leaves you with delays. Loneliness don't give, does not give speed. It brings delays. Praise the Lord. Ten ways to dealing with loneliness. Ten ways to dealing with loneliness. Psalms chapter 34 verse 18. I want you to understand that God has solution to any form of loneliness. Whether marital, societal, or physical. He has solution to every form of loneliness. Psalms, God bless you, Rego, please. You give us two or three different translations. It says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. God is near to them. The Lord is close to those I mean, it's close to the broken hearted. In case you're feeling lonely, God is close to you. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. If your heart is broken, you will find God right there. If you are kicked in the gut, He will help you catch your breath back. You won't die in the name of Jesus. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Meaning, to every form of loneliness, there is a solution. Look for it. Don't die in it. Look for it. They say the cat has nine lives. You kill the first one, the second one comes alive. You kill the, the second one, the third one comes alive. You kill the third, the fourth comes alive. You are better than the cat. You should have more life. Whatever happens to you, as long as life, relationship, and connection with people is concerned, should never be strong enough to stop your life from enjoying fulfillment. Whatever happens to you. Life sweet, too. Tell somebody, say, life sweet. No waste your life because of what in person do you. Life is sweet. LG. Life is good. Hmm? Yes. So God said, I am close to those who are heartbroken. Mike Mudok, in one of his books, he said, the broken hearted are best at mending other broken hearts. So whatever malady you're going through or you have right now, there is a remedy for it. It's God Almighty. So ten ways to dealing with loneliness. Number one, build a stronger relationship with God. Build it. A stronger relationship with God. The time men abandon you should be the time you get closer to God. As men run away from you, you run closer to God. A time will come, people will begin to look for you. The psalm is speaking in Psalm 27 verse 10. He said, when my father and my mother will forsake me, the Lord himself will raise me up. Psalm 27 verse 10. The Lord himself will take me up. Get closer to God. 
Even if the person that broke your heart is inside church, don't leave church. Get closer to God. Number two solution or ways of dealing with loneliness. Be comfortable in your own personal company. Be contented with yourself. Be contented with yourself. With yourself. Paul say, I am what I am by the grace of God. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Be contented with who you are. Be contented with yourself. Be contented with yourself. In short, become a one-man army. Be, become, become the point of att att attraction. Let people rally around you instead of people running away from you. Be so solid, so loaded, so contented that people want to hang around you. Don't look dejected or forsaken or rejected that those who are around you already will begin to run away from you. Be contented Tainted. You've lost friends enough. Family members have abandoned you enough. The ones that are with you right now, smile enough to keep them. Don't frown to chase them away. Be contented with yourself. Don't make yourself a liability to the world. Be contented with your own company. Let people find life and find light. By coming around you. That is how you deal with loneliness. Number three, we say open up to friends, family members, or people that you trust. Number four, get out of the house. That bed that has tied you down, cut the rope, come out of it. Come out of it. Tell the bed, I've slept on you three days at, at a stretch. I'm standing up right now. I am standing. And then you're up. Don't let depression keep you on the bed. Loneliness keep you on the bed. You eat food on the bed. Drink water on the bed. Brush teeth on the bed. Almost want to go to the toilet on the bed. Ah, wake up now. Wake up. Wake up. Praise the Lord. Come out of the house. Take a stroll. As I told them in the first service. Even if you don't know where to go, go anywhere. Even if you don't know where to go. They say, where are you going to say, even me, myself, I don't know. I just the worker. <laughs> I'm just, I just the worker. I, I must come out of the house. Mike, know what you're shooting. I must come out of the house. And the person on the mixer, know what you're mixing. It's part of service. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, say, just go out. Where are you going to? I don't know. Just go out. At least there is something that will distract you from the depression you have been going through. Or there is something that will excite you. Just go out. Number one now. Number five. I talked about attend church. And join a department. People don't know the miracle going to church creates. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You don't know the miracle going to church creates. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Never you get too used to God. Yeah, you say, what's the need going to church? Don't worry. Until they put you in a place like China. Or they drop you in a place like Pakistan. Where they won't allow you to go to church. It is then you will know the value of church. Our sons and daughters, our brothers that are in foreign countries right now, where maybe before they will get to church, they have to drive two hours before they get to church. They have to drive two hours to look for church. They are missing church like no man's business. There are no set of people that, go, that do online church and online prayers like people abroad. When they were in the country, they are posing. I don't feel like going to church today. I'm just tired. I don't feel like going to church today. I have to take break out of church today. Until they traveled out. When they needed church, there was no church to attend. Go to church. It will do a lot of wonders. You see that period you come to church, that praise and worship is going on? That the word is being taught? 
that people are shouting and jubilating, you don't know the miracle it does. It does a lot of healing, a lot of miracle. Joy brings healing. The Bible says, a merry heart, do it good, as medicine. It heals. Then get a department and join in church. And stay glued to that department. Serve God. That is where God services you from. Serve him. He services your heart, services your soul, services your mind, services your body. Never come to a stage where you are too, you are too polished to belong to a department in church. Or you are too exposed and civilized to belong to a department in church. Or you are too old to belong to a department in church. Never you come to that stage. Or you are too busy. Get a place and belong. Go. Get a place. Tell somebody, get a place. And serve God there. Look for somewhere and serve the Lord. You may not understand now. You won't understand. Number seven, am I right? Be patient with life and be patient with people. Number six. Okay, go up. Number six. Be patient with life and be patient with people. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. So what the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 3. James 1 verse 3. Be patient with life and then be patient with people. One thing I have learned is to be patient with people. I've learned it. Me? Hey, those days, I don't have patience at all. I send on a message, you don't go, I will stand up and get it done. And then those who walk around me, I'm doing the work and I'm paying them at the same time. Finally, I told myself, how can I be walking and you're collecting the pay? You go walk the walk. If you want to make mistake, make mistake. You go walk the walk. So they do the work right now. I will sit down and watch you. Those days I scarcely have patience with people. I'm, 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 I, 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 well, I say I don't have patience. Okay, this is how it is. You come to me. You know, people have a way of messing up pastor's time. Eh? Let me say this to us to open our eyes and also indirect warning to all of us. Hear me very well. You will go to work on Monday. You will do your work on Monday. You will make your money on Monday and eat your money. On Tuesday, you will go to work. Do your work. Make your money. Eat your money. On Wednesday, the same thing. On Thursday, on Friday. On Saturday, you will jump from cinema house to cinema house. Football pitch to football pitch. Everywhere. On Sunday, the pastor will be resting after service. That is where you are coming to see me. And when I tell her I don't have time, he say, this pastor is impatient. I just send you a message, you. Are you understanding me? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you understanding me? You know what it means to stay awake from Saturday night into Sunday morning? Praying and then rounding up message. You come preach for two services. Somebody who has been gallivanting and... Except I give you an appointment on Sunday. Don't enter my office. My protocol guys will show you the way out. It's not embarrassment. You should be wise. What did I say? You should be wise. I gave somebody an appointment one day. The person didn't come. Then the next time I don't know where I was going, the person came around. And my PA asked my own appointment. He said no. But that didn't know that I'm supposed to see him last time. When they told me, I didn't say anything. I called him into my office. I said, did I give an appointment today? He said no. So why did you come? I didn't come last time because I was busy doing something. I said, okay, I will not see you this time because me too, I'm busy doing something. And I walk him out of my office. And somebody will say, the pastor is rude. No, he's not. Praise the Lord. You know, there is this game people do. I'm rounding up already. Praise God. There is this game that's going on right now. Somebody will come and line up. I am not the... I am the... The person will walk away. Another person will come up. I am not the... I am the... The person will go away. Another person will come up. I am not the... I am the... Me, myself, I don't come out. I am not the pastor that you will waste his time. The pastor you will waste his time is... Then there is the latest one now. How did they put it? Huh? Of course. 
Is that the seed? Eh? Beautiful. Of course. Pastor should suffer for everybody. Because that is how they made pastor to be. Of course. Pastor should go without food. Because they want pastor to fast by all means. Of course. Pastor must see everybody. Because pastor doesn't have time for his life. Of course. I refuse to be of course. <laughs> is somebody hearing me? Praise the Lord. What took us into this? Those days, when people come to see me, they will spend one hour talking. Enter the second hour. Sometimes our staff here, they pity me. Say, sir, which can matter that man carry come? We do three hours. I say, see me, see trouble. Oh. Tell them, say, hold on, hold on. I know where you're heading to. You say, pastor, you don't know where I'm heading to. Hold on. Praise the Lord. Be patient with people doing it anyway. And be patient with life. Be patient with life. Don't be in a hurry. You just came into town. You've not started business. You want to buy a car. Why? Because the person that told you about Abuja is driving car. Be patient with life. One is not saying that you shouldn't walk. But be patient. I told us about James 1 verse 3. Let's get there quickly. James 1 verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh out patience. Verse 4. Verse 4, quickly please. Patience, but, pas but let patience have a, a perfect work. Perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. How do you deal with loneliness? Be patient. Be patient with life. Be patient with people. And be patient with God. Don't push God. Don't overdrive life. And don't overexpect from people. Number seven. Look after yourself by taking good care of yourself. Look after yourself by taking good care of yourself. Psalms of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Look after yourself. Tell someone to look after yourself. Because a time will come after you have worse wasted your life for people and for things that don't matter. You just look at yourself and ask yourself, now maybe this. What did I do myself like this? Did I call for any scripture? Songs of Solomon? God bless you. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the son had looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of their vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. I have not looked on myself. I have not taken care of myself. You can take it out. I'm done. I couldn't take care of myself. I couldn't. Because of people. Those days, I used to behave like El Shaddai. And you shall die. I used to behave like Father Christmas. Those days. At the expense and the detriment of my family. Then one day I woke up. I said, bros. Don't let your children grow up and hate ministry. Don't let them regret becoming children of pastors. Don't let it happen. It was then I took my time deliberately to begin to attend to my children and attend to my wife. Those days, money enters my hand pew, everywhere. There are times I've collected feeding money from my wife's hand. Please give me that money. I'll give you back. Give me, give me, give me. For people and give to people. Take care of yourself. Take good care of yourself. There is a way you stand before the mirror that you see yourself. That joy you begin to flow from your heart. There is a way you stand before the mirror you see yourself. You begin to dance. Hey. See me. Why there are times you come before the mirror, you look at yourself, you will almost hide and ask Namibi this. Take good care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Number eight, am I right? Stop comparing and stop competing with others. You don't want loneliness? Stop comparing and stop competing with others. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 
verse 2 and verse 3. Stop comparing. Uh, my mates, my mates, my mates are like this. My mates are like that. My mates have this. My mates have that. Sorry, please. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. 10 verse 12. God bless you. My mates have this. My mates have that. My mates have this. You've forgotten that your mates are also dying. My mates are married. I'm not married. Your mates died. You can follow them to die. My mates have job. I don't have job. Your mates are also dying. Follow them and die now. If destiny is about mates. My mates have their own building. I don't have my own yet. Your mates are dying. Also die with them. Don't live your life by mates. Live your life by destiny. What's God's plan for your life? Look for it. What's God's plan for your destiny? Look for it. Kill envy. Kill jealousy. Kill competition. If not, you will die of heart attack before your time. If not. If not. Don't take last. But don't compete and compare. Enjoy life. Fulfill destiny. Be active. Don't be at the reactive side of life. Be active. Don't wait until your friend buys something. You might want to buy. Buy before they buy. Now, true sense be that. They bought shoes. That's why you know that the shoe is, is, is existing. Buy before they buy. Wear before they wear. Praise the Lord. Today, some people can't stay in this country again because their mates are in Canada. The only problem I have is this country. The dad will go to Canada. I won't have any problem. The dad will go to Canada. You don't know if the person's destiny is in Canada and your own is in Nigeria. I must go to Canada. Canada, Canada, Canada. Until you become Canary. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Number nine. Be friendly and be around friendly people. Be friendly. And be around friendly people. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. How do you enjoy being alone in the name that people broke your hearts? How do you celebrate just being around yourself alone? If it doesn't concern you, it should be a burden to you. If you try friendship in the office, it didn't work. Try in your neighborhood. If you try, it didn't work. Try in church. Try. Have somebody you can talk with. I have a friend. I have this friend. Anytime I want to play, I will just call him. He will drive to town. We'll meet. We'll go to parks. Just go to park. You know this bumper vehicle. You know this bumper vehicle. We will enter it. And then be bumping each other. Beep. Beep like that. After bumping, 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 we'll come out and laugh. That tension will follow me. Go there. Don't disappear. Have friends you can play with. Finally, understand that loneliness is a choice. Don't forget that. Loneliness is a choice. If you are feeling lonely today, it is possible that you have reasons to be lonely. But you should understand that nobody pushed you into it. In other words, don't let the reason to go into loneliness... Be reasonable, reasonable enough to pull you into loneliness. Don't let it. You may have reasons why people disappointed you. You may have reasons why you don't want to forgive yourself. You may have reasons why things are not working. But please, there should not be reasonable enough to pull you or push you into loneliness. How can you live 10 years, live 5 years, live 2 years, Live three years carrying people in your heart in unforgiveness. How? Which can have to carry? Even Satan, they forgive. Amen? Oh, sure. That is the way the devil will deal with you that you will abandon your face another person. You carry one person in your heart. One person. One person. Say, my father will never forgive my father. My fa I will never forgive that man. I will deal with him. Seven years don't pass. Ten years don't pass. Say that lady, I will show her pepper. 
I will show her that this Abuja will not contain us. You have been saying that for the last 12 years. God is blessing her. She's advancing in life. She's married. She has seen her third or, or third or fourth child. You are still here as a single lady. Angry. She snatched my boyfriend. She snatched my boyfriend. She snatched. Look for another one. Look for another one. Don't ruin your life. Let your life find fulfillment. Time is now waiting for you. Not at all. Stand to your feet. Time is not waiting. Time is not waiting for you. Time is not waiting. Lift up your hands and honor the Lord. Were you blessed this morning? Did you receive anything from God? Give God great praise this morning. Give God great praise. Great praise. Wave your hands. Clap your hands. Shout unto him. And let him know how grateful you are. In the name of Jesus. If you're happy and you know, take your seats. Are you blessed this morning? Jump to your feet and give the Lord some shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, there are people that are 28, behaving like 82. I will help you this morning. If you're happy and you know, take your seats. Those who are 39, behaving like 93. Jump to your feet and give the Lord some shout of praise. Can I tell you how to live? When you come before God, behave like a child. When you go home, you can behave like daddy and mommy before your children. But when you come to God, behave like a child. Just play. Feel free. Just feel free. Woo. Woo Just feel free. Eh? You can do ballet. <laughs> feel free before God. That's why it's your father. That's why it's my father. Don't come to church and why are you looking like that? I'm a holy pastor. <laughs> praise God. Can we give God some praise this morning? Just celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your healing. I want you to just take this prayer and let it cover general expectations. Say, Father, bring me healing. Right now, in Jesus' name. Any area you believe God for healing, talk to him about it right now. Ask him to just bring you healing. Lord, bring me healing. I don't need to tell you to strike the cords. Father, bring me healing. Healing. Makakoshia. Ilana ketosh. Mendenyatas. Likakosh. Ending ligagas. Maleketes. Thank you, Lord. We'll give her the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. You hear this morning, want to hand your life over to Jesus. And let me say this here. In case you're in any state at all, that you feel that you need to pour out your heart. You need to air yourself out. You want a listening ear. A worthy shoulder to lean on. Someone to cry to. But you don't have anybody to trust. Please, my office doors are wide open. My arms are wide open as your spiritual father and as your pastor. Are you understanding me right now? You want to talk. You want to talk. Um, you can meet with my PA and it will give you an appointment. We will talk. We know that a lot of people are going through a lot of things these days. They don't know where to run to. God is waiting for you. Your pastor is waiting for you. My office is wide open. Whatever you face, God will deal with it. And you will come out and rejoice again. In Jesus' name. You share this morning, you're not born again. You want to hand your life over to Jesus. I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Write my name in your book of life. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Amen. If you made that prayer, please pick your Bible, pick your bag, and just come out. Let me receive you on behalf of God Almighty, and your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. You made that prayer, just come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. 
God bless you. And if you made the prayers online, please let us know. And our officers will get across to you immediately. God bless you very good. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat.